Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. To your younger brothers and sisters who would want to take up engineering in the future. And to your relatives. That's one way you can keep me going inspired and refreshed. Now, if you find my videos interesting and important to your studies, also please don't forget to subscribe. So let's still have weed load this time transmitted on a truss member then we analyze the force on a truss. So the figure shown is a simple interior truss spaced 4.5 meters apart into the screen. All top cord members weigh 3.6 kN per meter, bottom cord members weigh 2.4 kN per meter, and the only web member weighs 600 N per meter. Determine the member force of AB and BC due to the combined effect of the weight and the wind. The wind moves from, uh, from left with a speed of 200 km per hour. Wind pressure coefficients are positive 0.2, C sub 1, and C sub 2, negative 0.5. Other useful data are B equals 6 meters and H is 4.5. Again, the spacing of this interior truss is 4.5 meters apart. So first, let's compute for the uniform wind pressure, W1. It is wind pressure coefficient 0.2 times pressure times spacing perpendicular to the screen or board 4.5 meters where pressure or Q is equal to 0 0.0473 velocity square and velocity is in kilometers per hour when we derive this formula and the resulting unit pressure would be Pascal. So 0 0.0473 times 200 square is equal to uh, 1892 Pascals or 1.892 Pascals. Therefore, W1 on AB is equal to 0.2 times 1.892 times 4.5 meters and it is equal to 1.703 kilonewtons per meter. W2 on BC is equal to 0.5 times 1.892 times 4.5 and that is equal to 4.257 kilonewtons per meter. So we now compute the wind load horizontal here. And it is 1.703 times this vertical projection H, which is 4.5. Then we transmit half of that load at the end of the joints because supposedly the loadings of a truss would be transmitted to the joints, not on the member. So that's the definition of a truss. So it is 7.664. 7.664 is 1.703 times H, which is 4.5. We then transmit half at A horizontally and at B horizontally, 7.664 divided by 2 is 3.832 kN, 3.832 kN. Then for the vertical component of force, wind force, which is downward because this is positive 0.2 compressor, is equal to 1.703 times the horizontal projection, which is 6. Then divide it by 2, transmit it here, transmit it here. Then for the weight of the members, we also divided by 2 and transmit at A vertically and at B vertically. So it is equal to 1.703 times 6 divided by 2 which is 5.109 kN. This other 20.7 kN is half the weight of AB and half the weight of AD vertically. So the length of AB is square root of B square, 6 square plus 4.5 square and it is 7.5 meters so therefore the weight half of the weight of ab is 3.6 kilonewton per meter top cord times 7.5 divided by 2 plus half the weight of this bottom cord 2.4 times 6 divided by 2 so you'll get 20.7 kilonewtons again half the weight of ab is 3.6 times length 7.5 of AB divided by 2 plus half the weight of AB which is 2.4 times 6 meters B is 6 divided by 2 so that's that's why you get 20.7 kilonewtons then at 
dc let's have the wind load first horizontal it is equal to 4.257 kilonewton per meter times h which is uh, 4.5 then divided by 2 so you'll get uh, by the way this 25.809 is 5.109 plus 20.7 kilonewtons so you'll get 4.257 times h 4.5 divided by 2 so 9.578 kilonewtons uh, that is automatically transmitted at B also at C 9.578 kilonewtons now for the vertical force at B vertical load at B then we have to transmit half the weight of AB which is which is 3.6 times 7.5 divided by 2 plus half the weight of BC which is 3.6 times 7.5 divided by 2. So it's like 3.6 times 7.5. Then half the weight of BD, which is uh, half the weight of BD is 0.6 kilonewton per meter. It's a web times height 4.5 divided by 2. So that's the weight. Then 5.109. This, this is wind load downward, so there is also 5.109 here due to wind load downward. Then the wind load, vertical wind load on BC is upward because this is suction negative 0.5. It is upward. It is 4.257 times horizontal projection 6 divided by 2. So I will just explain the components of the vertical load at B which consists of 5.109 plus 28.35, then minus 12.771. First, 5.109 is the is half of the vertical load here on AB. So that's why we have 5.109 here, 5.109. This 28.35 consists of half the weight of AB and half the weight of BC. So that would be uh, one full length of of AB because AB and BC are equal. So it is 3.6 times 7.5. 3.6 times 7.5. That's I think 27. Then the excess is half the weight of BD, which is 0.6 times 4.5 divided by 2. So that 28.35 is 3.6 times 7.5 i just use 7.5 because half of 7.5 here half of 7.5 is half of 7.5 plus half of 7.5 is 7.5 so 3.6 times 7.5 is i think 27 then plus half the weight of bd which is 0.6 times 4.5 divided by 2 so you'll get 28.35 then this 12.771 which is minus because the wind load vertical load here is upward 4.257 times 6 then divided by 2 again 4.257 times 6 divided by 2 is 12.771 and it is minus because we consider downward loads gravity loads as positive so that upward uh, wind load is treated negative so this 12.771 is 4.257 times 6 divided by 2 and it is subtracted there so here the vertical load here therefore is because this joint is the same as this joint so the weight of the members to be considered here which is downward is is 20.7 then minus 12.771 then the load here the load here vertical load here would be half the weight of ad half the weight of cd and it is 2.4 times 6 divided by 2 plus 2.4 times 6 divided by 2 so that's 2.4 times 6 plus half the weight of bd transmitted at the so 2.4 times 6 here plus 0.6 weight of BD 0.6 times 4.5 divided by 2 so that would be equal to uh, 15.75 I think so here as I said it is 
20.7. This 20.7 is half the weight of AB plus half the weight of AD. So same is true here, half the weight of BC, which is the same as that of AB, plus half the weight of CD, which is the same of that as that of AD. So that's why you had 20.7. Then minus 12.771, that's half the wind load, which is upward. So equals... Uh, this vertical load here at B is equal to 6.88, 20.688. Then this vertical load here is 20.7 minus 12.771 equals 7.929 kilonewtons. Then at D is 2.4 times 6 plus 0.6 times uh, 4.5 over 2. So you'll get... 15.75. Again, this 15.75 kilonewtons is half the weight of AD, which is 2.4 times 6 over 2. Then half the weight of CD, 2.4 times 6 over 2, to be transmitted here. Then plus half the weight of BD, 0. 0.6 times 4.5 over 2. So you'll get 15.75 kilonewtons. So, so we'll draw another truss, same truss. And let's now transmit the net forces or loads as shown. So at A, we have 3.832 and 25 rightward and 25.809 downward. At B, we have 3.832 plus 9.578 rightward. So that's 13.41 kilonewtons. Then 28.688 downward as shown, kilonewtons. Then at C, we have 9.578 kilonewtons rightward and 7.929 kilonewtons downward. And at D, we have 15.75 kilonewtons downward. So at C, 9.578 kilonewtons rightward and 7.929 uh, downward. Let's call the reaction here as AX uh, assuming leftward and AY upward. And at C, we have R sub C upward. So take note that B is 6. And H is 4.5, so summation moment about C equals 0. So we have AY times 12 plus 13.41. 12 is 6 plus 6. So AY times 12 plus 13.41 times H, which is 4.5. And the rest would be counterclockwise, so equals 25.809 times 12 plus combined. 20.688 plus 15.75 times 6. So we can now solve for AY. AY is equal to 38.999 kilonewtons. Likewise, summation moment about A equals 0. Uh, counterclockwise positive. So we have R sub C times 12. Then the rest is clockwise. So equals 7.929 times 12 plus 13.41 times 4.5 then plus combined moment of quantity 20.688 plus 15.75 times 6 R sub Z therefore is equal to 31.177 kilonewtons then summation forces horizontal equals 0 AX leftward equals 3.832 plus 13.41 plus 9.578. So AX is equal to 26.82 kilonewtons. We then determine the slope here because this is 6 meters, 4.5. 6 divided by uh, 1.5 is 4, so 4 horizontally. 4.5 divided by 1.5 is 3, so 4 horizontally, 3 vertically, so 5 hypotenuse. So call that force in AC, stress in AB, AB rather, assume tension, stress in AD also as shown, then the slope is 4 horizontal, 3 vertical, 5. Same is true for BC, and we have uh, stress in BC, stress in CD. So let's isolate joint A, summation forces vertical equals zero here. So vertical component of SAB, which is SAB times 3 over 5 plus AY 
equals downward force 25.809 SAB times 3 over 5 plus AY which is 38.999 equals vertical force at, at A, vertical load at A 25.809. So solving for SAB, we can now solve for SAB and it is negative so it is compression. Negative 21.98 kilonewtons. Likewise at C, summation forces vertical SBC times 3 over 5 plus R sub C which is 31.177 equals 7.929 and SBC stress in BC is also negative so it is compression. SBC is equal to negative 38.75 kilonewtons. So that's it for this problem. You may check and equilibrium the system to verify that I already checked that and it's up to you to check the system to verify these answers.